Coming to you live from our news first studios here in Colombo on TV1 and Shakti TV. A very good evening to you. This is Primetime News. I am Shahin Jirangpati. A very good evening. I am Mahina Bongzo. Here's a look at your headlines tonight. President instructs IGP to take measures in order to prevent ragging. The only occasion where a primary dealer bid on behalf of another primary dealer was related to the infamous treasury bond issue, revelation by the central bank governor before the presidential commission. Two groups of fishermen clash in Kantale. Australia win the third T20 against Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka secure series win 2-1. President Maithripala Sirisena has instructed the Inspector General of Police to work with university authorities in order to prevent ragging. President Maithripala Sirisena made these remarks participating in the 75th anniversary celebration of the Ananda Shastra Laya in Matagama today. The President unveiled the statue of founder of the school, former finance and justice deputy minister Daya T. Pasquale erected on the premises of the school. The newly built technology lab was also vested with the students by the president. We cannot create room for barbarism to prevail. We cannot allow for the law of jungle to be enforced within universities. In building a virtuous student body, we aspire for justice, equality, discipline and modesty. Who is steering the students in this path? Who is behind this? From where did the money come for them to rent out a house to harass students? Where did the funds come from? Who is destroying these students? Those behind these acts will ruin the students to enforce these acts. Such acts need to be looked into and it is paramount that we find a solution to it. President Maithripala Sirisena met with electoral organizers of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party this afternoon. The president held broad discussions with the SLFP electoral organizers regarding the current political situation and the progress of local development activities. Our main objective is to move forward in this political movement to strengthen the party mechanism while bringing a new face to it. What we need is a qualitative political movement. We need to ensure the quality and commitment while maintaining an honest political movement. We need to work for it. We have to make this process successful together with the citizens of this country. On the 2nd of next month, we will hold the Executive Committee and the All Island Working Committee meetings. We have interviewed 10,000 candidates for the upcoming elections, so we hope to select the most suitable candidates for each electorate. It is clear that the president, who is also the head of the party, is treating them in a very democratic way. This democracy was not practiced within the party before. We have been very successful in the past instances. More than 90% of the central organizations, women and youth movements have been successful. We can see the progress made by the party in rural areas. The president is giving the much required leadership to the party. Views were expressed by the joint opposition and the subject minister on the local government elections today as well. The Elections Commission does not have the authority to hold the election just because the delimitation report is gazetted. Though Minister Faisal Mustafa approves and gazettes the delimitation report, the Elections Commission does not possess the legal and constitutional authority to hold the elections. There are two more factors to be fulfilled. A gazette notification should be prepared stating the number of positions in every local government body. I suspect that the government is trying to waste more time on this. So which means, even if the established gazette is being issued, they will take more time to release the next one. We believe that this is the government's plan. The elections will not move away from the electoral system, but the government is willing to make the necessary amendments if there is any injustice taking place under this act. 
The joint opposition needs a slogan. That is why they are doing this. I see this as a part of democracy in action. Basil Rajapaksa should be blamed for the elections being delayed. We are facing this issue today due to the attempts made by him to destroy democracy and the representation of the minorities. Providing evidence today to the Presidential Commission of Inquiry to investigate and inquire into the issuance of Treasury bonds, Central Bank Governor Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy said that the 27th of February 2015 was the first time in the Central Bank's history that a primary dealer placed bids on behalf of another primary dealer. Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy, provided evidence to the Presidential Commission for the second day today when he convened at the Ministry of Justice. Attorneys representing Perpetual Treasuries and Deputy Central Bank Governor P. Samarasiri, who was Chairman of the Central Bank Procurement Committee and is accused of being linked to the transaction, appeared at the Commission today. Though the Attorney General opposed the representation of an attorney for Samara City, it was later decided that it is allowed under the provisions of the Presidential Commission Act. When questioned if there were instances when bonds were issued for a much higher price than informed to all primary dealers, the Central Bank Governor said that he is unaware of such an incident. The attorney representing Perpetual Treasuries informed the Commission that there have been such instances, adding that his client had provided the relevant documents. However, when the Commission requested for these documents to be presented, the attorney said more time is needed for that. When questioned if an internal investigation was conducted among the employees of the central bank regarding the series of events surrounding the bond controversy, Dr. Kumaraswamy said no such investigation had been carried out. While the state council said that the incumbent central bank governor is acting without cleaning his own house, Dr. Kumaraswamy said that even though there is a minority of wrongdoers within the central bank, the staff at the bank are excellent. The central bank governor said, therefore, that there is no need for his house to be cleaned. The presidential commission is due to reconvene tomorrow, where the secretary to the Ministry of Finance is scheduled to provide evidence. Welcome back to the news. The case pertaining to the abduction of journalist Pragit Eknaligore was taken up before the Homagama Magistrates Court today. Journalist Pragit Eknaligore was reported missing on the 24th of January 2010. I requested the court to address the issue where certain officials are influencing the first and second suspects. The Honorable Magistrate rejected this request. Meanwhile, many parties expressed their views on the abduction and assault of journalist Keith Noor following the arrest of five army intelligence personnel in connection with the incident. Were journalists suppressed during your government under the guise of war? No, I completely reject that. The members of the army intelligence have no need to abduct journalists. Isn't it too soon to say that they are members of the army intelligence? Seven years have passed since I travelled hundreds of miles and it's almost nearing eight years. Only I know the fear that I feel when I call to memory the incident where I was abducted and tortured. I think it's a feeling that only a person who was abducted and tortured like that could put into words. This incident has left me partially handicapped. My leg is being treated. I can only stand with the help of steel supports. During this time of winter, the steel gets so cold that I can't bear it and it causes me so much of physical pain. How can we come and live freely in this country when these criminals are still at large? I can tell you how my leg was broken. They kept my leg on a log and broke it from the ankle. After that, I was hospitalized for 29 days. I was walking on crutches for another nine months. This is clearly an act to suppress the media carried out by the Rajpaksa family. This government of good governance can only do right by the people who gave them this mandate by meeting out justice to the political leaders who contributed towards suppressing the media. There was talk about Gothabi Rajpaksa being the main person involved in this. Certain evidence that links him with these incidents are also coming into light, but it is clear that the investigations into these matters are not progressing the way people expect it to. We saw a few months ago the Inspector General got a call asking him to bend the law. We saw the Inspector General of Police stooping down and giving an OK to bend the law. If the Minister of Law and Order, Sagal Ratnayaka, was not on the other side of that phone call, we urged the government to reveal who exactly was on the other side of the call. But the government has failed to respond. The Inspector General cannot bend the law without the consent of the Minister of Law and Order and other high-ranking politicians. You cannot even arresting those who have been accused of this. The powerful persons of this country are trying to hide behind the guise of good governance and protect their allies and work together with the corrupt businessmen who had forged deals with the previous government. The 
The Anti-Corruption Front says that the procurement process was violated while appointing the current Chief Executive Officer of the Information Communication Technology Agency or ICTA. They point out that the tenure of the CEO should not be extended at a time when information of a corrupt system has come to light. <laughs> The Rama Corporation has attempted to purchase our frequencies for dirt cheap. They are trying to create an unpredictable future and bring a major loss to the country by disowning these frequencies which are resources of this country. We tell you firmly that this has not stopped. The plan they implemented through this Rama Corporation has not stopped yet. That is why they are trying to hide facts. The tenure of Mohundan Kanage, who leads his corrupt deal, will end by the 2nd of March. We would like to request the president to end his tenure as corrupt people like him should not hold such high ranking positions in the country. There are several issues surrounding Mohundan Kanage starting from his appointment. ICTA has failed to reveal the exact value of the two-year contract. Arrangements have been made to extend his tenure which is scheduled to end on the 2nd of March. High-ranking politicians are the ones who support him. We will not be able to stop these companies from selling these frequencies of the country if we continue to have Mohundan Kanage in this position. If the president allows such persons to remain in these positions, disregarding the accusation leveled against him with regard to the Google Loon project, then we can say that very soon under the name of good governance, Sri Lanka will become a country which has the highest telephone and internet charges. The Unity Through Power Devolution Movement convened a media briefing today. Uh, Lakshman Kiriala raised a question in Parliament. If Mahindra Rajapaksa could have 200 advisors and consultants, why can't he do the same? 146 vehicles have been taken to Kandy. Vimalavira Vangsa, who was arrested for the misuse of 84 vehicles, was sent to prison and was denied bail yesterday. Lakshman Kiriala was frightened because of this. The Prime Minister has warned that he will be next. The 146 vehicles are now parked in Kandy. Who is going to pay for the losses? Is it Lakshman Kiriala? There is a turn for them all. President Maitri Pala Sirisena has given Navy Commander Vice Admiral Ravindra Vijay Gunaratna a service extension effective from today. The Navy Commander, who celebrated his 55th birthday today, was to retire from his position today. Ravindra Vijay Gunaratna joined the Sri Lanka Navy as an officer cadet on the 9th intake on November 1st, 1980. He underwent basic training at the Naval and Maritime Academy Trincomalee and at the prestigious Britannia Royal Naval College UK where he was the recipient of the Best International Midshipman Award. Vice Admiral Ravindra Vijayakuratna had served as commanding officers of SLNS Saira and many other vessels and during his unblemished career he held many ranks rendering an insurmountable service. When the floating armory of the terrorist was destroyed in 2007, Vice Admiral Ravindra Vijayakuratna was the Director of Naval Operations, Special Forces and Maritime Surveillance. Vice Admiral Vijayakuratna is a highly decorated senior naval officer with gallantry medals for his acts of bravery and valour. He is a recipient of accolades such as Virodhara Vibhushana, Rana Vikrama, Rana Sura and Uttama Seva for his exemplary naval career. He took over the command of the Sri Lanka Navy on the 11th of July 2015 and is a product of Royal College Colombo. President Maitripal Sirisena as the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces extended the services of the Commander of the Sri Lanka Navy today. Now there was chaos in Kantale today due to a clash between two groups of fishermen. A group demonstrated opposite the Kantale Divisional Secretariat today, urging authorities to lift the ban on fishing in the Mahavava in Kantale with the use of throw nets and fishing rods. A discussion with the intervention of the Divisional Secretary took place thereafter to reach a solution to the issue. <laughs> The group resorted to demonstrating by obstructing the Trincomalee Colombo main road. <laughs> Tensions arose when a group opposing these fishermen arrived at the location. I'm 
The situation was brought under control through the intervention of the Kantale police. Huh? The Minister of Finance has warned that stern action will be taken against traders who sell rice above the government control price. Minister Ravi Karunanayaka graced the event to place a foundation stone for the construction of a playground for the 17th lane in Kotahena. There is only one issue. The joint opposition is bankrupt. The issue that they raise is that when rice reaches the port at 53 rupees per kilogram, why is it being sold at these prices? We are trying to put a stop to the black market trading. If anyone is selling rice above the government controlled price, legal action will be taken against them. The minister also responded to allegations made against him. They level allegations against us. In a society overwhelmed with jealousy, the person who works the most is the one subject to attacks. When it comes to corruption, the person who works to reduce corruption comes under attack. The corrupt never come under attack. The media never follows the persons who skim money. They focus on the person attempting to put a stop to it. The JVP blames us all the time. They go around searching for gossip. They survive on that. What is Mahinda Rajapaksa doing? When he had power, he did nothing. And now that he has lost it, he is speaking up. The issue is that these persons are still in the open rather than being put in prison. That is why they blame us. In more local news, heads of several state institutions commented on the readiness to face the arid weather conditions that have affected the country. Intermittent thunder showers could be experienced across the country except for the northern province in the coming days. We cannot be certain about this duration. We can forecast showers for the first week of March as well. The inter-monsoon will become active by mid-March. We can hope for better rainfall at that time. The government is currently in the process of preparing a compensation scheme to areas that fail to cultivate during this harvesting season. Water levels have dropped by around 75% in the reservoirs across the country. It can differ according to the number of irrigation projects in each district. Currently, there is no issue in providing pipe-borne water. As seawater has started to mix with the fresh water in the Kaluganga, there is an issue relating to salinity. For those areas in the Kaludara district, we will provide water for consumption and food preparation via water bowsers. The main issue will be faced by those who depend on groundwater. For those persons, we will deploy water tanks that will be constantly filled by water bowsers. If we have a good rainfall from March to April, that will be good for us. We are currently providing electricity under many hardships. 92% of the electricity is generated from thermal plants. Only 8% is generated from hydropower plants. We have no intention of disrupting the supply. We believe that the CEB will have to bear an additional cost of 51 billion rupees from January to June in order to generate power. This is a serious issue. Electricity was one of the points raised at a media briefing convened by the anti-corruption front. We have seen the actions of Minister C.M. Malapitya and Secretary Batagoda where they take the media to water sources in the central hills, citing there is an electricity crisis in the country. As previously exposed, these two persons are attempting to once again purchase electricity from six diesel power plants that have been shut down. This entire process is corrupt. The taxpayers will be subject to a 14 rupee tax for each unit of electricity that is generated. Mr. Batagoda and Mr. C.M. Balapitiya have an urgent need to continue with this process. After the news, questions were raised in Parliament today over a mechanism for identifying lands that would be given to foreign investors. As there is no proper mechanism to obtain and identify such lands, foreign investments that flow into the country face many obstacles. Will such a mechanism be introduced in order to remove such obstacles? 
This is a serious issue. That is why the Prime Minister has proposed for an amendment to the Lands Act and called for the introduction of another act. All the lands will be identified and brought under one institution. A program will be enforced to release those lands through one particular board of directors. There is a law that at a time when the owner is not residing in the lands known as Jayabhumi and Swarnabhumi, the ownership goes to the eldest child of the owner. At times, the child who took care of the parents resided in the house despite not being the eldest in the family. They have no relief from the law. Therefore, will the ministry take measures to prepare a mechanism so that persons who have been residing for 15 plus years can claim ownership to such lands? What you say is true. That is why the Prime Minister has proposed for an amendment to this Act. The government has accepted it as a policy to grant full ownership to the lands that come under Swarna Bhumi and Jaya Bhumi. During the UNP administration, an Australian government-funded Bimsavya program took place, but it came to a standstill during the past. The new government is in place. Will this program come into effect? That program has not been stalled. A foreign enterprise has come forward to survey the lands using the latest technology within six months to a year. They are to provide us with all the plans as well. In addition, the unions attached to the Department of Survey have said that they are prepared to do it. We are going to see who can undertake this task and prepare lands for the Bimsavya program. In a month or two, a decision will be reached and the land deeds will also be provided. Speaking in Parliament today, Opposition Leader R. Sambandhan expressed views on constitutional reforms. Under Article 75 of the Constitution, it further states three, for the avoidance of doubt, it is hereby further declared that a constitution bill shall only be enacted into law if it is passed in Parliament by a special majority of two-thirds of the whole number of the members of Parliament, including those not present, and subsequently approved by the people at a referendum as required by Article 83 of the Constitution. The current 19, 1978 Constitution did not have such consensus, nor did the 1972 First Republican Constitution have such consensus. The failure to evolve a Constitution based on such consensus has been the reason for the failure of such constitutions. It is absolutely essential that these processes be taken forward in a genuine and purposeful manner so as to ensure permanent peace with justice and equality to all citizens the country has been wiser. I hope that political parties have become wiser. I'm inclined to think they have. A seminar-themed Constitution, Reconciliation and You was held in Colombo yesterday. I think the truth is that the government does not have the confidence that the people will endorse what they put before the country. One of the main reasons for this is the widespread perception that this is a corrupt government, possibly the most corrupt since independence. So we have a series of such horrendous frauds. There is the unprecedented problem at the central bank. Then we had the Supreme Court of the country. The Chief Justice observed that the conscience of the court is shaken by what the court was told with regard to the coal tender. Then you have a situation where there's a great deal of trumpeting by a massive investment on the part of Volkswagen to discover Volkswagen is not related to this transaction. Then you have the foreigner situation, the tyre factory in the heart of foreigner. 
uh, land available for the lease rent of 100 rupees per acre a year, one could go on. So there, there is definitely a strong public perception that this is a dishonest, corrupt government and all of these fact factors are bound to play in the public mind when it comes to voting at a referendum. Reconciliation is important and we want reconciliation. And we don't want reconciliation behind the backs of the Sinhala people. We want the Sinhala people of this country to approve substantive changes in the constitution. If people are saying, oh, we don't know whether we are going to win the referendum, what are they saying? They are saying, let's smuggle something through behind the backs of the people. We don't want that. We want a process that is transparent, that is clear, people to know what it is and accept it. That is the constitution that will last. That is the constitution that will achieve reconciliation in this country. Sri Lanka needs constitutional change, but not a change of constitution. I say that the constitution must not be repealed. We are told that there's something radically wrong with Sri Lanka. That therefore you need to scrap the state system. You need to scrap the constitution. That we have failed. I ask myself in comparison to whom or what. We have prevailed over the world's most powerful terrorist movement at that time. We have sent back 70,000 foreign troops and restored our sovereignty. We have retained a competitive democratic system. We have retained social welfare. And we have fought off uh, conspiracies of the far right, such as the military coup conspiracy of 1962, and two southern ultra-leftist insurrections. We are a success as a state. We recovered faster from the tsunami than Louisiana did from Katrina. So I refuse to believe that we are failure and that our state system, our state form, has to be replaced. Political commentator, former diplomat Dr. Dayanja Thilaka also spoke on the 19th constitutional amendment. If we didn't have the executive presidency today, if Prime Minister Vikram Singh's original draft of the 19th amendment that he sent to the Supreme Court but was thrown out by the Supreme Court, uh, if that had prevailed, if that model had prevailed, then Arjuna Mahendran would still be the governor of the central bank and the bond scam would probably still be going on. It is because President Sirisena had even the truncated powers under the 19th Amendment that he was able to intervene and he replaced the governor and put in Indrajit Kumaraswamy. This is a Ravana nation, but with a Vibhishana government. Still in news from here at home, police had opened fire at a motorcycle in the Rajawala area in Digana for not heeding orders to stop. Two persons were injured in the incident. According to police, the two injured has been travelling from Digana to Rajavala in a motor bicycle without wearing helmets. Police say they opened fire when the motorcyclist refused to stop when ordered to. The injured were admitted to the Teldenia Base Hospital and thereafter were transferred to the Candy General Hospital for further treatment. Police said the injured were suspected of committing several crimes. A memorandum of understanding was signed today between the governments of Korea and Sri Lanka. The MOU was signed this morning at the Ministry of Education to construct a National College of Education and Teacher Training for the Technological Stream in Kuliapitiya. The National College, which will be funded by the Government of Korea, will be constructed at a cost of 1,911 million rupees. The signing saw the participation of the Minister of Education, Akhiliviraj Karibasam, and government representatives from both Korea and Sri Lanka. Establish a teacher training institute is a long felt need of Sri Lanka. According to the futuristic vision of our government, we are de dedicated to develop teacher education, especially the technical and vocational education. The government of Korea came forward to help us to solve this constraint by giving a helping hand to build a national college of education. 
Sri Lanka teachers will get a valuable opportunity to obtain and share the knowledge and skills in technology sector from a foremost developed country like Korea. One of the national tasks of Sri Lankan government is to create 1 million jobs. This project will be very meaningful because it emits skilled workers in both domestic and overseas markets. In order to create high value added industries as the market develops, it is very important to supply excellent manpower to the market, which will contribute to national economic development. Well, with that, we conclude tonight's edition of Primetime News. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Mahina Bogzo. And I am Shahin Jarangpati. Good night and take care. Thank you.